Hey y'all, just a quickie video today revisiting this nonlinear circuits neuron. As I've mentioned before, I have this as a physical Eurorack module, you know, made out of atoms, but it's free in VCV rack, and we can duplicate it as many times as we want, so I just wanted to quickly talk through it in rack here. Last time I talked about defining an artificial neuron as something that takes in multiple signals, mixes them, and then applies a nonlinearity to those signals. I've talked more about that elsewhere. But briefly today, for the sake of completeness, I wanted to talk about this bottom section, which I skipped over last time. Again, this is the single neuron, three inputs, one output. This is the double one, same thing, just two of them, three inputs, one output. And there's the diff rect on this one. Slightly different layout here. Okay? So let's first have a look at some things. Here is a sine wave. Let's take that same sign, put it into the positive input one and see what we got. Now it's kind of hard to see on this scope. Let's remove that blue for a second, but oh, hey, it's actually just a rectification. Bink. Okay, let's look at the negative output. So again, removing the original sine wave. Hey, it's the other half of that sine wave. So if I wanted to, I could remove the original sine wave here. Hey, and then there's my sine wave back. Well, I mean, not really, but y you know what I mean. So I don't have anything into the negative inputs here, but there are two outputs for the diff rect. The positive output is the sum of all positive inputs minus the sum of all the negative inputs. So if I were to run this into the negative input, okay, I have zero here in my positive input. So now if we look, when it's zero minus the sine wave, and that's positive, it shows that, right? Okay, and then the negative output is the sum of all positive inputs minus the sum of all negative inputs when it's less than zero. And when it's greater than zero, it's, it's uh, zero. Okay, so if I run this now into the negative, what are we gonna see? Well, so it's still, zero minus the input. So we first invert the original sine wave, and then we take the part that's negative. Of course, we can add more things here. When we're using the negative output, the outputs will always be negative here. It's the sum of these minus the sum of these when it's less than zero, and when it's greater than zero, it's zero. When I do here, it's always gonna be positive sum of these, well this, minus the sum of these when it's above zero, and otherwise it is zero. So what's the point of this? Well, rectifier, all good about a rectifier. We could also take two different waveforms. Bink. Let's do it in the positive one. Okay, so now it's taking the sum of those two waveforms, or then I can put this one into the negative. All right. So now rectification, keep in mind, is a form of nonlinearity. So now I am taking multiple inputs and applying a nonlinearity to them. So arguably, this is another neuron. Okay, well, so. What can we then do with this? And why is this on the nonlinear circuits neuron? Well, uh, it's not immediately <laughs> an easy question to answer, but let's say, what if we took this sine wave, this triangle wave, just for fun, okay? There we go, we've got something fun coming out of there. As you know, we can adjust the sensitivity and response to get the signal that we want. And you know, why wouldn't we, just for fun, Add a simple VCO. So now we're gonna take this, run into the vault per octave. Let's just listen to a triangle wave. Okay, that sounds amazing. Maybe we'll turn that down for just a second. Okay, so we could take that, or we could also take this run it into our diff rect. So this is the output, right? So that was negative input one. 
and then let's take, I don't know, the negative output and let's run it into this second neuron here. And then we'll add this sine wave into there. And then we'll take this and we can mix this into the negative two and then this into here. And all of a sudden, now we're starting to get way more complexity because now I've sort of created a neural network here, not learning anything, this neural network, but it's two neurons networked together. I get this a lot where you get these super high frequencies in there, but. Okay. And we could take, I don't know, square wave here. And of course, instead of doing this, we could take our LFOs, replace them with VCOs, sine, triangle, sawtooth. This looks like we need one more, right? By the way, I'm not thinking terribly hard about this. Send them to different frequencies. So I haven't thought out what's actually going on in my little network there. Oh gosh, are we ready for this? I don't know if I'm ready for this. Now the other thing is maybe I want uh, some sort of attenuator before these so I can control their amplitudes, but. So I'm just listening from there. I could make the stereo by listening from this one. Do I need the rectification in there? Maybe not, but I can maybe play around with this and get some more sophisticated behavior based off of what my choices are. If you're messing around with nonlinear circuit stuff, probably you know that you're engaging with chaos. So maybe this is less about planning things out. That said, you could absolutely think this through a little bit more carefully than I did today. Again, if you think about what's gonna be negative and positive and as you run these together, or even if you know that from the neuron, you need to send out a unipolar signal instead of a bipolar signal, this is a handy little utility to have at the bottom. Hope that's useful. Mess around with it. Let me know what you come up with.